Hello and welcome to the Rangers Rabble Academy review. Sorry it's been a while since we've last been on, just work commitments and everything else, it's just been a wee bit crazy. Um, I'm just going to look back at some of the recent games for the B team, look at some of the results for the under-18s and just a general chat. So if you want to join in in the comments section, feel free. Um, I'm joined by Kerr, how are you doing mate? I'm not bad, Willie, I'm not bad. Good stuff mate, love it. Okay, there's my first comment. Morning from Texas. A good afternoon. <laughs> Texas, I love it. I've always I wanted know. to go to Texas to be fair, so maybe one of these days we'll get lucky enough to go. For a cowboy hat, um, a cowboy bitch. That's a great <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> Bro, I, I know you would like maybe something silly like that straight away. I like a pair of cowboy bits. Don't have well, like that's maybe for another like time, mate. I don't know if this is the right one <laughs> for that. Um, uh, right, we'll look back at today's result first and foremost. A great victory for you know, the Rangers lads in the UEFA Youth League against September Sofia. Um, I suppose also winning away from home is always a big deal. So what did you make of that um, after beating Hammer being the last round to now to beat the Bulgarian team 4-2 away from home? That's a good result. Today I was, I mean, I was at the Bromby game. I was, I was actually sitting myself and we played really well. And obviously I don't know how that team has we played today, but to go away from home anywhere in Europe and score, two, uh, score four goals, as a great result for young guys, and Tony Weston's going a hat trick. I mean, the boy's just scoring constantly. He, he must be, I'm going to say he's pushing for the first team, but he must be pushing it to be included in the training in the squad somewhere because yeah. he's young enough. We people say he's young, but he's young, maybe he's young enough, but he's good enough, isn't he? Well, he's on the, it must be in the fringes yet because scoring goals at any level, you know, yourself is difficult, and this guy's been consistent the full season. He's due a chance somewhere along the line. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's the thing with Tony. I mean, like, obviously, in the last round against Malmo, you know, we won home and away. Uh, Tony was a big part of those victories. Obviously, we, we went away to Bulgaria today. We don't know the level of the opposition. It's obviously hard to judge the fact that you get very little kind of live coverage of these games, so it's really difficult. But as you said, Ella, to get away from home in the UEFA Youth League, you know you're playing against a good quality of opposition to a point. Yeah. So to go there and for Tony to score a hat-trick, for Cole McKinnon to score the other, it's a great, great, you know, performance from the young lads. And obviously the return leg, I think, is the seventh of December. So hopefully people can get along to that. And then obviously can maybe judge for ourselves the quality of the, you know, the Bulgarian opposition to see. But I mean, in terms of Tony, I think that's like 22, 23 goals now on the season, including friendlies. So it's hard to not talk about somebody who is scoring that amount of goals. I know it's a big step up, you know, obviously Tony in the main is playing in the Lowland League. He's playing some of the SPFL Trust games, which we'll get into in a couple of minutes. But how much of a jump would that be for Tony to go from playing in the Lowland League in the UEFA Youth League to even being part of the first team squad? Do you think that's just too big a jump at the moment and it maybe alone is the next possible thing for him? It probably is too big a jump, depending on who you're up against. Maybe to even start games. But being involved with training and being involved with the squad and then maybe the next option is alone to maybe a championship team or a lower side in the SPL because I mean, you look at people look at people's ages don't they as players and think well he's not, he's not old enough to get in the first team but if he's shown the promise and shown the consistency what else is he meant to do? He can't really do no more to be putting himself in the frame to say listen I'm here if you need me. I mean yeah. apart from maybe scoring against better opposition which is quite difficult because he only scored against who he's playing against but you know yourself well, some of these lower leagues, they might not be great size, but some of these guys have played at league standard and some of these guys are big centre half, so might not be technically good at f- footballers, but they're, they've put the tackles in and they're physical, so it's a hard gap on against these guys because sometimes it's hard up on against guys who are that style of game and actually up against technical players. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing, and it's. Well, I'm not being disrespectful to the Lowland League here by any stretch of the imagination. We're just saying that going from that level to playing for the Rangers first team with the level of expectations is just a big jump. Um, we'll just kind of look back. Obviously, it's been a while since we've covered you know the games online in terms of you know the updates, the academy review. I think um, with 10 games have went by since we were last on because yeah. it has been a busy <laughs> period, incredibly. Um, seven wins and three defeats. The first defeat coming against the Cumbernauld Colts, where we we lost four one at home. I know, obviously, that night we quite a few players missing, unfortunately, and in the end, it was a pretty comfortable win for the Cumbernauld Colts. 
Um, another defeat was against Bone S, which I think was a bit disappointing on the day because I think we actually played okay, but we maybe just didn't take our chances when they came. And then obviously the most recent one was against Dalbeaty Star, which I think, to be fair to Dalbeaty, I think they obviously ran out deserved winners. You know, they were well set up, they were well drilled, they obviously got the goals at the right time to kind of take it away. So that's just one of those things. But in terms of the seven victories, we were just going to get into those quickly. The 2 1 1 against Hammerby away from home. That was a great result for the lads. Um, a 3-1 victory against the Cali Braves. Um, probably the biggest of the results, if you ask anybody, was probably the 3-2-1 against Alawa. Did that come as yeah. a bit of a surprise that we went away to Alawa and won that game? Or did you think that the boys are just good enough to go and win those type of games on a one-off occasion? On a one-off occasion, anything happens, but I think it probably would have been a surprise, especially to maybe Alawa players. I might have looked at Rangers and I think... These guys are still academy players. We should maybe have a good chance of beating them, even though they're quality of footballers. And to go away to Alwa and get a victory is a great result for the boys because it kind of shows them, listen, we can, we can play against Alwa. We're playing against teams in the Lowland League who isn't a very isn't a bad league, like we said. It's it's a really good league to be involved in because it, physically it's going to make the boys more physical and stronger to play against better players. So I think that's a great result against Alan. Uh, who is it we've got again in the next round? Well, that was one of the things we were going to kind of talk about in a couple of minutes, but we're right. away at Cove Rangers next. So obviously right. you could say that's a step up, you know, yeah. because of where Cove are in the league compared to Alan. Yeah. I know so that's actually the next game for the B team. It was something I was going to come to you in a few minutes, but I'll just ask you now, obviously since we're on the subject. That's obviously a good quality Cove team. You know, it's a team that's obviously spent some good money, a bit like what yeah, Kelly have done. Yeah. You know, they've brought in a higher standard of player than that level. Do you think we're more than good enough to go to Kelty and get the one, or do you think that's maybe just a step too far potentially? I think the boys were confident in it. Why shouldn't they be? I mean, they beat Alwa, they way to Bulgaria and win today. And if they believe in themselves, they should not fear no opposition because that's what their end game is trying to get into Rangers' first team or trying to get into somebody's first team. So can I wait places like this? They shouldn't fear it because if they can play their potential and do what they've been doing, they'll give Cove Rangers a game. Yeah, I think for me it's exciting. You know, I'm looking forward to the game. Um, I've already bought my ticket, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to the. I mean, obviously the travelling part is obviously the worst part. You're a good couple yeah. of hours you're there and back, but I think for me, like, these are the kind of games you want to see the lads tested in. You know, I didn't make the last round against Alawa, unfortunately. But I know speaking to some of the parents that were at the game, the boys really stood up to it. You know, yeah, Alawa are obviously kind of quite a physical team. Yeah. You know, they've had to show some character within the game. And obviously for Juan to get his hat trick, that must have been a great confidence boost for him. Yeah. Um, and I think the big thing from that game is, and I think we've all just spoke about it there, it's a confidence thing, isn't it? Yeah. I know we obviously had lost in the previous round to air, but because of the whole eligibility thing with the two subs, the boys have had an opportunity to come back into the competition again. Yep. Does beating Alba just give you that confidence that you can beat teams at like sort of League One level or above? Or is it just one of those games where you get into it and it's a one off occasion and you just deal with it as is? I think you'll find it's probably a bit of both. Beating Alas gave them a lot of confidence, especially because they get beat there, but then also they're thinking to themselves, well, it's a cup game. We're underdogs here, so we'll go out and do our best. But you know yourself, doesn't matter what age group you're playing at, if you're being the Rangers top, teams are up for it. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing. I'll just try to reply to some of the comments here as well. I'll try to do two jobs at once. But I think <laughs> the big thing is, when you come up against league opposition, that's when people will talk about it, isn't it? When they see you coming up against an Alawa, an Air United, a Cove. And in some ways, I'm sure there's people out there that want to see the young lads fail. Because that's just the nature of being a Rangers player. You know, there's people on the outside that are hoping the Rangers get absolutely battered in some of these games. Mm. But for me, like, if we can go away to Cove and we can show, you know, the right attitude and we can put in a good performance, I fully believe we're good enough. And there's obviously that possibility that somebody like Stephen Kelly could drop in and play again, which obviously with his experience having been out on loan, you know, he's a great fit to just drop into that team. Yeah. Yeah. I, and also just another quick point, obviously over the last kind of week or so, we've had Leon and Kyle back, back in at centre-back, which is a big thing for Rangers. Obviously, those are probably the two best centre-backs, you know, within that age group. See, in terms of, you look at something like sort of Greg Allen, he's only 16, Lewis McKibben, I think, is only 17. So, I mean, what is, like, the difference for somebody like, obviously, Leon, for all, he's only 17, he's got the experience, he's been in the first team, Kyle's 19, 
he's also been in the you know the first team squad in quite a few occasions now. How big a difference is it for somebody like that to somebody that's maybe only sixteen that's just kind of signed his pro deal that's trying to come in and play B football? You know, so what is like the contrast for those two kind of guys? Obviously, Leon's experienced been in and around about the first team. He's played. He's wanting more of that, and but guys who are saying that contracts are looking at Leon thinking I want to do what he's done but I want to do I want to do more and they're all the same in the academy they're up, they're, they're, they're all know at the back of their heads but they're not all going to be in the Rangers first team because that's impossible yeah. you know you like yourself every academy team but if we can get two three maybe four through into the first team then that'd be really good because I've been seeing the boys and you know more than me because you watch them constantly some of the boys just need a chance and that's what they do they need a chance because you can't judge them on one or two appearances with the first team or yeah. a 10 minute substitution appearance you need to give the boys a chance but playing my club at Rangers it's very difficult getting that chance because if they bring in the first team and they, uh, they, they panic or they don't they don't play well the fans can go on their back yeah. they can be downhearted and it can cause in a big way because at Rangers a draw is not good enough now I mean a defeat it's, so it's very difficult that's how sometimes when you see other clubs doing it it's easier because there's not as much pressure so it's some of these boys have to deal with a lot of pressure as well in the Premier Rangers it's not getting out to your part and performing it's a pressure situation sometimes that can affect them more yeah and I think that's the thing like you don't really know how somebody's going to react don't you know until something goes against you obviously Greg's made a few mistakes since he's committed to the B team but in reality he's raw you know, he's coming in to play against what you spoke about earlier on is some men who have played championship, League One, League Two in Scotland. And all of a sudden, you've got a 16-year-old centre-back who's still a bit raw, who's basically came from Hearts over the summer. He's played a lot of football, mainly for the B team and some games for the A team. I think he actually might have played more games for the B team now than he has for the A team <laughs> because of the amount of injuries that we've had at times. But I think the thing with Greg is, even when he's made a mistake, his head's not went down. You know, he's yeah. just trying to get on with it. And I think for me, that's a good sign. Because it'd be easy, as you said earlier on, for a young kid to make a mistake, to then let his head drop, and then things can just spiral, you know, really, really, really quickly. And obviously, you don't want to see that. But I think even looking at, like, obviously, today's squad, for instance, you've got Greg Allen on the bench in that UEFA Youth League. So he's a couple of years below the level that you're allowed to be at that one. Yeah. And you've got Rory Wilson on the bench. I mean, like, Rory's only 15. And yet he's on the bench for the like, a game like today. So uh, I suppose you've got to look at it from both sides. It's a great experience for both uh, lads. Obviously, Greg's managed to come on. I think he replaced Leon, if memory serves me right. And obviously, Rory came on at the end of the game there for these for the last five or six minutes. But I think the big thing with Rory is Rangers would obviously love to keep him. There's a lot of clubs looking at Rory, which is understandable. You know, the yeah. kids are... You know, he's a really, really good talent. He scores a hell of a lot of goals. His record at 18's level this season is a bit ridiculous, really, for a 15-year-old. Just the amount of goals he's scored. But yeah, again, I suppose that's the big thing about the academy. You know, like, to see these guys progressing. For Rory, who could still be playing under-16 football, to be playing under-18s and scoring the goals he has. And then he's been on the bench, obviously, in some of these European ties, and he's managed to come on the pitch. For me, that's progression. That's what we want to see. Um, we want to see young players being pushed up the ladder and obviously like sort of progressing. Because obviously you could argue that, you know, Greg Allen has maybe made more mistakes at B team level, but he'll take more from that because he knows he can't make those mistakes again. Yeah. Whereas potentially if you make those mistakes at 18's level, you might not get punished to the same kind of point every time. But this season it feels like every time Greg's made a mistake at B team level, the ball's ended up in the back of the net. And that's obviously just part of the learning curve for somebody that's still so young. Um, Fob Dog's asking a wee question, is there a big difference between A team and B team? Yeah, look, I think that's a fair question. There is some of the under-18s that have played B team football this year. But in general, um, yeah, there is a difference in terms of the standard is different. You know, you have to say that because the end of the day, the B team are playing in the lower league, the under 18s are playing in the under 18 league. Yeah. It's not really the same kind of level of competitiveness. For all Rangers can't get promoted out of the lower league, you can still see the competitiveness of the games. It's not really the same at 18s level, and that's not being disrespectful, you know, like to that level of the game. But this is one of the big issues in Scottish football that once a lot of the lads get by under 18 football, there's no way to go. Because like the reserve league was scrapped this year, is it going to come back next year? Is that really a competitive enough league 
for our best young players to be playing in. Is the loan market in Scotland really the best? You know, should we have more B teams in like the Lowland League or League One, League Two? These are the kind of arguments that will go over and over and over a hundred times. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, what's your opinion on it? Do you think that if we want more best young players to progress, that they need to have like a B team or a coach team structure? We have to, there has to be a pathway of some kind because it seems to be at Rangers. Obviously, you know because you've watched them for a long time, but over the, we've, we've all seen all these names coming through, these guys with talent, and then they get to a certain point where the B team are the 18s, and then they kind of go missing, or they get released, or they go somewhere else. And I'm not saying they go somewhere else and do better, but I just feel it has to be a pathway into the first team. Like I said earlier, that can be very difficult at a club at Rangers because it's very difficult to bleed more than one or two guys at a time and even then yeah. they're not getting a lot of minutes and that can put the boys off as well because they're doing the hardest to get into that situation and then they'll see maybe the club going out and buying somebody or bringing somebody yeah. in which is a setback for them as well and so you have to kind of find a happy medium at a big club which is difficult when you're trying to win trophies and Keep the fans inside and my just try to keep his job and stuff like that. It's a whole da- it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole Pandora's box, isn't it? You'd, it's difficult for the young lads at these clubs. When you see other clubs doing it, I know they're not as big provincial clubs like Rangers, but other clubs in the SPL budding youngsters and they're doing really well. But they can go into their teams, make mistakes, and go into any teams and they can drop points and stuff and there's no comeback. We go into Rangers and that happens. Like yeah. I said earlier, the boys can get set the boys back or the manager can say I can't you have to go back to the tried and test you so I'd like to see a pathway but it's difficult it is difficult and understanding but having seen the B team a good few times there's a few boys in the team who are going to be playing first team football somewhere might not be Rangers but they will be playing first team football because there's a few boys with a lot of talent on that side yeah, I mean, there's one of the comments for CGM. He's saying the argument against the B teams are ridiculous football dinosaurs holding the game back because of jealousy and envy I mean, I've kind of made, you know, I've kind of made my point on social media a few times about this, and you get a bit of your backlash, which you accept everybody's going to have a different opinion. But for me, does it not make more sense for our best 16, 17 and 18 year olds to be out who are basically under control by Rangers, just like Aberdeen could have that control or Hibs could have that control, but they're being tested every week. Like, so the reserve league is not competitive enough for our best players to progress. It's just that simple. Whether people like that or not, that is just the God's honest truth. But I do get the other side of the argument. Of course I do. People see Rangers and Celtic and think it's like, you know, the bully boy tactics. Here come Rangers and Celtic again. They're wanting this, they're wanting that. But the simple reality is, you know, Rangers are trying to do what's best for their young players. And like Aberdeen could do the same and so could Hibs and Hearts and many other clubs. Nobody's saying they can't. Yeah, the Rangers of Celtic just happen to be the guinea pigs on this occasion that are out trying to show that it's worthwhile having this. I mean, look, I don't know, for instance, if like, sort of every other season one player broke into the Rangers Celtic team off the back of having a B team or a Colts team, is that progression? For me, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what about looking at the Scotland team at the moment? You've got Billy Gilmer who comes through at Rangers, who's now one of the star attractions for that Scotland team. And you look at Nathan Patterson, Another who's gone through the academy at Rangers and is now like a mainstay in that Scotland team. Like, does that not show you that if we can get guys out earlier, their guys could be in the Scotland team earlier, or they could even, you know, make that next step up like, earlier in their career? And I think that's the annoying thing for me. People just kind of go back over the old same rubbish that Rangers and Celtic are trying to bully their way or buy their way into the leagues and things like that. And it is, it's frustrating, but. It's one of the arguments for another day. Do you day think day. sometimes the boys have to maybe make a choice of going somewhere else but to follow their career? As in Barry yeah. Gilmer, for instance, because mm-hmm. with Tia Brennan's Scotland squad, if he was still at Rangers? I mean, like, it's one of those questions you can't answer, but like my belief is, like watching Billy when he was like 15, is that Billy would have likely made it into the Rangers first team at 16 or 17. And Billy would have probably been a regular on the Rangers first team. You know, there might not have been a need to go out and sign like a Joe Aribo or a Glenn Kamara, yeah. b- because we already had Billy, so that's always the argument. And like Nathan, I mean, Nathan, to be fair, like, he probably wasn't a standout like sort of two or three years ago, but it shows you what you can do if you're just given that chance. I think the best versus best games were great for Nathan. I think when we were playing, playing teams from Holland, from Germany, from England, from all over, I think that really helped Nathan. It really pushed him up the ladder. It really helped him develop. And this is yet again going back to being tested against 
good quality opposition almost on a weekly basis. And I think, you know, like sort of going back to the lone league, it's been great for some of our young players. It's been great to see them, you know, stepping up to the physical element of the game and like the tactical side of the game because things change and that's what it's all about. And I think that's the only way that we're ever going to improve as a country. Um, because any day, every player that breaks in is breaking into a first team from an academy somewhere. Yeah, and then they're ending up playing for Scotland. So you can't tell me <laughs> that, it's, that it's not a good thing to have the best young players out playing football competitively yeah. at a young age. But I think you find the same thing down in England, right? Enough for the big clubs because they end up all, have all the talent, the good talent from their areas. Chelsea, yeah. for example, Man City, and they're not going to make their first team, so they end, end up going to on loan to places or getting released to other teams like Germany yeah. and there, and then they get brought back for phenomenal amounts of money and. I think every big club is finding it difficult to put many boys from an academy in their first team at one time. So it's not just Rangers, but we just like to see, we as fans like to see young players coming in. But like I said, it's finding a happy medium where you can bring the young players in and still win stuff because yeah. the managers know yourself. Some managers don't want to take that risk. Yeah. Okay, we'll just kind of finish up on the B team quickly. Just a shout out to all the lads who have been so consistent so far this season. You know, I think a big shout out to like Adam Devine and Robbie Fraser, the two fullbacks. I think they've had really good season so far. Um, same for Cole McKinnon. Cole's had to drop in and play a couple of games at centre-back recently. Not Cole's best position, but he's dropped in there because of injuries and things like that. So, and also for Cole to get his goal today is absolutely brilliant. And obviously Tony Weston. I don't think we could really say much more about Tony. We've obviously had a good wee chat about Tony earlier. For me... He possibly needs a loan, maybe in the second half of the season, whether well, that's what Rangers decide to do or not. Obviously, that's just my opinion. But potentially getting Tony out and loan to a championship team, playing 10, 15 games at that level, I think that would push Tony on even more. So yeah. we'll see what the January window brings. We'll try and do another pod before then and maybe do a wee round up of who we think should go out and loan and who should maybe make the step up for the 18s to play more regularly. Um, we'll just finish up the last part of the pod talking about the under 18s. So in their seven games since we've did, you know, the last review, they've won five, drawn one, and lost one. And um, the results are Rangers three, Mullable one. That was Greg Allen and Jack Roberts as well as their own goal. A free free draw away at Aberdeen, which was a bit of a crazy one. Kind of watching the game back, that was Rory Wilson, Jack Hartness, and another own goal. You might start to hear Rory Walsh's name a lot here, okay? So this is just to kind of, you know, he scores every game, basically. We beat Queen of the South 5-0. Rory Wilson, Connor Allen, Zach Mackay, Leighton Dunlop and Jack Roberts. We lost 4-3 to Kelly away from home. That wasn't the best offensive display from the young team, unfortunately. Um, lost some really, really poor goals. Rory Wilson, Robbie Ewer. Eh, sorry, Jack Hartness, Rory Wilson and Robbie Ewer with those goals. And then we played Kelly again the following week, but at home this time, we went 4-0. Rory Wilson, Robbie Ewer, Leighton Dunlop and James Graham after returning from injury. James is quite a tough kind of season so far with injuries, but it's great to see him back and on the score sheet. And then a 2 0 victory against Hamilton. That was Darren McAnally, a player who had basically missed a whole year through injury. So great to see Darren back and he even made it onto the bench for the B team, which was absolutely amazing. Great to have you back, Darren. Love seeing those tackles in the middle of the park, mate. You're a bit like a, a Scottish Reno Gattuso. You love kind of jumping into tackles and love that. Um, and also Rory Wilson scored the other goal in that game. No really a surprise. And most recently, Celtic won, Rangers 2. That was a great result for the young lads. Um, James Graham with the opener and who else but Rory Wilson with the other. I mean, I think that's about one, two, three, four, five, six games in the trot that Rory Wilson scored. And you were talking it's about... Like to say, is Rory Wilson under contract? No. Because you're well, well, I mean, in the summer, obviously, Rangers would be looking at obviously trying to, you know, make it professional. But, you know, the difficulty comes with a lot of these things, as you're well aware, yeah. that, you know, when English clubs start showing a lot of interest, it does make it really, really, really difficult. Um, I mean, just know that. There's no across border thing, in, but because he's aged, Yeah, I think it's go. a very minimal fee, though, that, yeah. that can be paid for these things. And basically, it's probably not really worth the paper that it's written on for Rangers. Yeah. But that's just the nature of the game. You know, we have obviously brought guys back and forth from England and Northern Ireland over the years, so we can't really complain too much. Um, next up for the 18s is Elgin City on Sunday at the training ground. 
yet again at the moment, a lot of these kind of things are kind of semi-closed door. It's mainly parents and invited guests that are getting into the game. But I know for a lot of people, they'll be watching the first team playing, so um, it probably wouldn't make that much difference to a lot of people that's obviously watching anyway. But good luck to the under-18s against Elgin City in the Cup. Hopefully we can get past them and on to the next round. Okay, we'll just kind of finish up with some questions that are on the, the kind of comment section. One of the guys is saying, talking about Billy Gilmer just quickly, Billy Gilmer has kept Steve Clark in a job. The difference he makes for Scotland is obvious. I think that's fair. You know what I mean? Billy is a special talent. Anybody that's seen Billy from, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 upwards, he's just an unbelievable player. Another comment from Ian Moore, the, the EPL under 23 League ruins development too. Simpson, one example of terribly underdeveloped player at 24, have only played 42 pro games. Yeah, look, I think this is an argument we had in one of the previous pods. Is it good? Is it bad for the under 23 development? I'm kind of 50 50 on it. I can understand that if a player leaves Scotland at say 18 or 19, he can then sign a three or a four year deal down in England to play at that level. So financially, it's great for him. But is it really great for his development? There's arguments two and four. You've got Dapo that left in the summer that signed for Watford. He's been out and loan at Wimbledon. He's done really well. Whereas there's, there's other guys that have left Rangers and it, they've just drifted. Yeah. You know, they've never really made that step up. And that's kind of one of the concerns with that level of league. I know some uh, clubs ain't going to get away, done away with their 23s during the yeah. pandemic. So I don't know if it's financial reasons or what, but they've done away with that. Because I know a lot of 23 games, there wasn't a lot of like physical challenges involved in them, which kind of going through the motions, which a lot yeah. of teams didn't like either. And it's not it's not great for the boys, that is it? You need a bit of challenge. Not particularly. I think for every one guy who makes that step up from the twenty threes to the first team, there's probably like fifty or sixty that just drift yeah. and end up playing in the conference or league two. So you could argue that, you know, for every Mason Mount and Hudson Adoy, there's fifty or sixty guys that are now totally dropped out of academies probably playing part-time football, who were deemed to be, you know, very talented players like 18 months ago, 24 months ago. And that's just the nature of football, sadly. Uh-huh. Um, Ian Moore's talking about some of the players that he thinks has stood out so far this year. Adam Devine, Charlie McCann, Tony Weston and Alex Lowry. Yeah, look, Charlie's a really good player, isn't he? You know, he was obviously at Man United, part of that under 23 league, funnily enough. But I mean, Charlie does look a proper player, doesn't he? Somebody yeah. that's very, very good in possession of the ball. He's basically being used as a 6, an 8 and a 10 this season. So that kind of shows you how good a player he is, that he can either sit deep, he can play in the middle of the park, or he can play that bit high. He offers a little bit of everything. To me, he should be a stick on for the first team in the not-too-distant future. I just think Charlie's got so, so much ability. I can see why the club signed him, you know, and you could argue that playing at the Lowland League maybe isn't, enough for Charlie that he needs to be pushed even further. Do you think he should be involved in the first team squads? I think it's because the midfield is so deep that is it you know, is it worthwhile to pull him out of a B team game to sit him on the bench for the first team and then he doesn't come on? So I think that's obviously the big argument at the moment. Yeah. Sorry, I think that's a van going by my house there. <laughs> but, um, I get the cone. <laughs> I, I think that's the thing. Like for Charlie, for me, like he needs to play at a more competitive level to see exactly where he could be at in the yeah. future. I don't doubt that he could go and play right now in the championship and be a really, really good player for somebody. But we're not going to know that until he does go out and loan. So that's obviously the argument you would have from both sides. And I... Obviously, we spoke about it earlier. Like, can you really go from the lowland league into the first team and like be that like sort of competitive like sort of nature in the game? I think it is difficult. So I do think that maybe going out and loan for Charlie in the second half of the season would make a hell of a lot of sense. Um, let's for you look. What else have we got here? The use we have are they willing to play 18 to 18 games with the hope of getting into the first team squad? Yeah, look, it's a fine line, isn't it? You know, for somebody like Leon King, obviously Leon, there's been kind of talk that Leon should go out and loan and play maybe a full season somewhere and then come back to Rangers because he would be more ready for the first team. Or do you just keep playing guys at under-18s level and MB team level and then they move them up? I mean, Nathan's kind of one of the rare breed that has basically not went out and loan and made it into the first team. For most other guys, like you look at Stephen Kelly, he's had to go out and loan a few times to make that step up. Obviously, Kai Kennedy's now been out and loan a few times. Josh McPate a couple of times. These were guys that were been touted for the first team. Robbie McCrory's done about four or five loans, I think, now. 
so yeah, it's a very it's a touchy subject for some people. If you talk to some of the academy coaches, they think that there's a, a different pathway for every player. So there is some guys that can just make that step up straight away. There's other guys who need one or two loans because they need to be pushed a little bit. Maybe they need that physical element to their game. Maybe they need the competitive nature of the football to see that. Um, I think it also depends on what position you play in the part. And, and, it, and if you're it's, it's basically if you're there at the right time and you get a wee bit of luck, you make it. It's all about it's just your luck to get in the first yeah. team. Nathan's had the chance. You see, he's done well and he's took it. Stephen Kelly's not really had a chance. No. And he's been forced away back out because he's not been used, which is a shame because we all know how good a player Stephen is. But yeah. he's up against maybe what, five, six guys to try and get a position, whereas Nathan's up against yeah. one. So it's a totally yeah. different ballgame. Right, the last couple of questions because Kel's having to get back to work soon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Leon King on a new contract. Yeah, look, I think yeah. that's fairly obvious for anybody's yeah. point of view. Leon, I think, is yet again out of contract next summer. Um, I mean, I've. I've got a lot of time for Leon and his family. You know, I mean, his mum's been, you know, really good to me over the years, just like kind of chatting in general. And yeah, again, like Leon's a really, really nice kid. You know, he's obviously been through a lot, you know, at, at 15 years old to be under that pressure to sign a contract at Rangers. You know, there was always something on social media at that point. It was a wee bit crazy, to be honest. But I mean, Leon's a super talent. And that kid has got so, so much going for him. He's still only 17. I mean, I think that's the scary thing, Leon. He's still yeah. only 17. But he's a powerhouse, you know, a real, real quality player. Yeah, hopefully we can get Leon on a new extended contract and see where he's, you know, the next 12, 18, 24 months are for him. A wee question for you, Kurt. Is Charlie McCann a better player than Stephen Kelly? <laughs> it's a tough I question. I think they're different, aren't they? Yeah. Stephen's more of a kind of holding player, like you said, tackle, he can spray a ball about in a position, whereas Charlie is more of a creative player, I would say, yeah. likes to get forward, but they're both very good prospects to have in the team, and I think they could do a, probably a first team job somewhere else, I'm hoping it's at Rangers, but like I said before, need the chance, and need, to, need the chance to prove they can do it, and it's just getting that chance, which is very difficult at club or Rangers, but they're both extremely talented individuals. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. It, it's such a fine line. Like you watch a lot of players and like I mean I've obviously watched Stephen a lot longer than I've watched Charlie. So and I've never kind of had my well it's not like a love in for Stephen, but I just appreciate the quality that Stephen's had at like sort of the academy level. And then when he went to United he was outstanding. He had a fairly good spell at Ross County as well. So he sort of done everything he can in Scotland in terms of he's played in the championship, he's played in the Premier League. He's obviously come back in the summer. Stephen Gerrard had kept him as part of the first team, but we've not really seen him. So that's been the problem. In the second half of the season, does he have to go out and loan, or does Gio maybe look at him and think, you know, that kid deserves a chance ahead of somebody like Bakuna or Lundstrom? Because it might be that some players aren't here after January, and that's maybe when Stephen gets his chance. So I think we'll just need to wait and see on that one. Um, Louise Wise is saying we have to get the wee... I think that's better to say Colombian in, but yeah, let me yeah. get your wrist. Fan <laughs> uh, Alegria. Yeah, look, Fan's did well when he's played. But you can but you can definitely see they're honest. Yeah. But Fan, there's you know, there's certainly some work that needs to get done with the big man. Um he certainly loves his celebration. He's weak in a Gabriel Amato celebration <laughs> that he does is quite good. But yeah, look, I think like I think to be fair to Fan, he's even more raw than what Alfredo was when he first came in. I think there's a good bit of work to be done with him yet before we see him in the first team. That's just my personal opinion. Um, Fob Dog, another kind of quick one here. Kelly proved he could play first team level at Ross County. He came into the first team squad and not featured. I realise the first team squad is deep, but getting up a few goals and then bringing the youngins on. Yeah, look, after that argument with 100 people, you know, and, you know, you'll have people that will argue two and four, you know, goal difference matters. We should be going after more goals. You know, guys should only be in the team on merit, not on their age. So, yeah, look, you could argue until the end of the earth about that, to be honest with you. Um, let's see, what else have we got? CJ, that's the answer I wanted to hear, not one or the other. Yeah, look, I think that's the thing. It's like, I obviously go to the games with some of the other guys when I can. Now, my work's going to change, so I don't get to all the games that I once did. But what you'll find is even in a group of four or five guys that go to the games... Everybody will have a different opinion. 
you know, like, I think Alex Lowry's a, a super talent and he can do anything. And then you'll have other guys that will say, well, maybe he doesn't do enough in games that he could do more. And this is what you think with football fans, you know, like, not everybody will be in agreement. You know, there's some people that think, like, sort of Leon should be in the first team squad more. There's some guys that think that, you know, what's the point in keeping Andy first when we could have, like, Jay Hogarth in there training yeah. with the first team every day and learning more. So, like, you'll always have these, like, kind of arguments with people or, or chats with people and know everybody's going to feel the same way. That's why it's really good to see the comments and people talking about the young players. And I hope, I mean, this is just my opinion. This isn't the opinion of the, of the rabble or anybody else. This is just mine. I hope Giovanni gives the young players a chance. Because for me, if we can develop, I don't know, one or two or three players over the next 12 to 18 months, and we can continue to develop these young guys and they become first-team players, that could save the club millions in transfer fees and in wages. And to me, yeah, surely... Well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's got to be the way forward for us. I mean, like, you see the money that the club has to spend in wages, you know, the money that we spent in transfer fees. It's not cheap. No. But, I mean, we've got an academy that we put a lot of money into. We've got an academy that, that has got an excellent standard of coaching, you know. And I guess, can I want to kind of finally say on that, eh, all the best to Graham Murray. I think I put a tweet out saying what I thought about Graham. I think he was a really lovely guy. Always very happy to chat whenever you were at games. He used to sometimes think we were a bit crazy for travelling to places like Wigan and Middlesbrough. He would sometimes look at us going, like, you guys are daft for like taking a day off your work to come and watch the boys play, but he was always really kind of joking, you know, he was always a really nice guy, so all the best to you, Graham, in the future, mate, hope it goes well, and you get a new job fairly soon, uh, okay, one last question, so that Kerr can get back to whatever he was doing, um, I think we're going I don't, back, I don't like to see that on screen, but I, I'll get back <laughs> to what I was doing, <laughs> uh, I think we're going back to the 20 man match day squad next year, which will help putting the young guns in, yeah, look, if that's the case and we go back to the extended bench, then, yeah, you would imagine we will see some changes which might and you know allow some of the academy players to potentially play a little bit more for the first team. That's what we all want to see. Um, just want to say thanks again for everybody that's tuning in. We've did the live thing today. We wanted to give it a try to see how it was going to go. In the past, we basically just did the recording and put it out. If you want to see us doing this again, let us know in the comment section. We'll try and do it as regularly as we can. Just apologise that it's been a while since the last one. I've started a new job and the work commitments have kind of stopped me doing some of the things I would normally have been doing. But thanks very much for all the comments. Thanks very much for yeah. tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the chat. Um, feel free to drop us a message at the Rangers Rabble or at RFC Youth Updates on Twitter. Thanks again to Care for coming on, mate. Much appreciated. Thanks, and I'd just like to say thanks for the comments. It's quite interesting how many... It's actually quite good how many people are interested in academy and the younger teams because you don't think that many people are but it's good to see because at the end of the day they're the future of the Rangers Yeah look mate 100% I mean that's how I feel about it I've always been very passionate about it I think you know if people ever want to come and give us a private chat with me send me a DM on Twitter I'm more than happy to chat about any of the young players that's coming through the academy um, at the moment obviously getting into the games is a wee bit more complicated than it was prior to Covid but yeah. hopefully once the world gets back to some type of normality whenever that is you know, you guys can come along and watch the 18s play. And yeah, again, as I say, next up for the B team, Cove Rangers away. I'll be doing some live updates for that game, all being well. And um, probably be freezing at that time of the year. But look forward to it anyway. And thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Take care of yourselves.